Hello there, and welcome to the Impact Zone podcast. We're back to review TNA Sacrifice here. We did a watch along a little bit ago, a couple hours ago or so. Um, and now we are having a proper review of the show. The show had a lot of, um, glitching issues with the feed. Um, I'm not too sure what was going on with that. Um, so some of the matches had issues with, uh, being able to see the entire match. So (laughs) it kind of, kind of hurt a few of the matches. Um, in the proceedings, so, but I think it was mostly due due in the first part of the show. So I don't know. Like they did get get rolling after a while, but it was kind of uh, kind of annoying uh, and whatnot. But still, uh, the show kicked off with Joe Hendry taking on Crazy Steve. This was going to be Laredo Kid. I like. I was asking, like. Is Steve taking on the Raider Kid like happening at uh like a TV taping or whatever? Like I thought it was happening at the next TV taping. I was like going, oh okay, yeah, sure, that'll be an okay, maybe like explosion match or whatever. Like so, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, uh, but. Apparently, it was going to be on the pre-show, which would have been way worse. Like, like, sure, you need to give Steve wins, but you need to give him more than just some wins against some people. He needs to win against people that are got some legitimacy. Yeah, he's, like, Hendry's got a bunch of legitimacy, but I don't think any of that legitimacy was hurt here, especially with his feud with AJ Francis. Um, but still, yeah, uh, Joe Hendry lost, but I did predict that Steve would win in this, um, but I don't really think it would have changed my opinion on, uh, this match, um, if I had have, if we hadn't known that it had been Joe Hendry, like, for right now, it just didn't really make, make much sense, and Hendry was just the fill-in, and they just decided to also do some stuff with, uh, AJ Francis to further the... Joe Hendry Francis storyline, so that was fine. It was a okay match. It didn't really get get going for a few minutes because Joe Hendry had a pretty cool promo at the uh, at the beginning, but was slightly interrupted at the end by uh, Francis. Get a little bit of uh, the highlight here at the end of the match uh, where Steve's like complaining about. A possible injury or whatever, um, and he's dragging in the referee. Hey, I'm injured over here, and Francis like just yeets <laughs> Hendry into the post. So, uh, but yeah. Then Mia Gia Miller interviewed the Rascals and Steve Macklin. And the Rascals went out to have their match with uh, Speedball Mountain. And uh, uh, Macklin said that he's not going to be out there to have their back, and he doesn't need them to have his back when he goes and has his match. Um, so then the Rascals went out to face Speedball Mountain um, in this in this encounter. Very fast paced uh, for the most part match. Um, it, I, I enjoyed a lot, I like everything on this, I like almost like everything a lot of the time. If something's bad, then like I tend to like linger on that. I don't want to, but it's just one of those things. Nothing on this card was bad. There was a few really good matches, like, but there was a bunch of matches that were re- quite good still. So, you know. Um, there wasn't anything that was on this card that I felt was just like, okay, it's there and it's a, it's a match and they had that match. Like everything on this card was good. And that's like good, solid work. You know, like you need to have guys having that good, solid work. Like you, like that's the problem about having like this too high of expectation, um, that some people 
seem to have. Like, I get that wrestling has changed and continues to change as we go uh, forward into the future and whatnot, and fans just expect more and more and more. But the thing is, like, those matches that you see more in are a really rare thing, honestly. And they should be a rare thing. Like, you should see a match like this and still sit back and enjoy it. You shouldn't be sitting back and going, oh, this was shit. Not that I saw anyone saying that or whatever, but just this idea that decently okay and good matches aren't good enough anymore or whatever is really the problem with a lot of people's thinking in wrestling. Um, everyone thinking that everything has to be four stars or five stars or whatever. No, it doesn't. Like, you know, like, <laughs> you can have just, you know, a middle-of-the-road match. This wasn't a middle-of-the-road match. This was a really quite good match. But again, like, this whole idea of, you know, you can't go out there and have just, like, a mediocre match or whatever... Uh, is is the wrong idea, even if it's on, like, the pre-show or the kickoff or the buy-in or whatever you want to call it, or the pay-per-view. Like, people need to go out there and kill themselves just to friggin' have a four-star match, you know. Uh, no, they don't, you know. They should be able to go out there and have a de- They have to have a decent match, certainly, but it's more, like, a good match is usually revolved around storytelling. Like, so, yeah. Uh, but I did think that the Speedball Mountain would win this one, and they did against the Rascals. So, you know, I, I feel like they're getting into that space now where, you know, they could be looking at a tag team title opportunity in the next, you know, few weeks or so. <laughs> Who knows? Uh so yeah, but anyway, that was the countdown show, the kickoff show, the buy-in, whatever you want to call it. Um, then the uh, show sacrifice itself started with Macklin and Nemeth. Now this is probably like the top, one of the top matches, like singles matches of the night. Um, even though there was a lot of glitches in this um, with the feed and whatnot. Um the story that was again being told here was all about each each of the men kind of using mind games, using each other's moves, uh, signature moves, finisher moves, etc. Um, throughout the match, you know, trying to hit their own moves and you know hitting the others' finishing moves or signature moves or whatever uh, in between, and and they pulled out a lot of stuff that they sort of don't tend to do. Uh, Nemeth with the angle slam, which is something that Macklin has used in the past. Um, a few people have uh, done the angle slam or the Olympic slam or whatever you want to call it. Um, Nemeth with the 10 elbow drops, the last one from the top. Um, you know, things like that. Like, I, I felt like, you know, like, like, Nick Nemeth has dominated seemingly this feud um, thus far and sort of been presented very strong. Um, so it was nice to kind of see that Macklin got like mo like a fair amount of the offense in this match. Not all of it because it had to be kind of like back and forth at certain points and whatnot. But again, he did dominate at, se at several certain points even though, like, Nemeth did make good comebacks and sort of was in the driver's seat for a few minutes as well. But, like, it wasn't nearly what Macklin was kind of doing, so that kind of felt good. Uh, although I still felt like this shouldn't be really the end of their feud, but I don't... I think it probably could be. But I have the thought to being like, well, what's Macklin going to do now or whatever? Um, so we'll have to keep keep paying attention. Actually, I want to say that if he teams up with the Grizzled Young Veterans, I feel like that's a better team for him to be teaming up with than the Rascals if they're going to split um, Macklin and the Rascals up. 
um, because they just fit his, you know, hard nose style a whole lot better, even though they're kind of with uh, Mustafa Ali or whatever. I don't know. Like, they could find something, some other people for him to uh, work with. Uh, this spot here where uh, Nemeth got out of the way of uh, Macklin's... Uh, or was this the bit? No, yeah, this is the bit, sorry. Um, this where he gets out of the way of his uh, caught in the crosshairs, um, spear-like maneuver in the corner, and Macklin literally yeeted himself basically right into the timekeeper's table um, and into the announcers. Um, yeah, it was freaking insane. Like, I was talking about the bump that he took I think it was to either Bailey or to Seven. Oh, maybe it was to somebody else, actually, but I'm not too sure now. My memory's getting a bit <laughs> a bit fuzzy sometimes. Even though we were only talking about it like a week ago, and he yeeted himself right into right into him and then fell right onto the onto the mat that looked like he, you know, really hurt himself in that, but he obviously didn't hurt himself too badly. Um, but yeah. Definitely, like, one of those things that is holy shit moment, you know, like, in this, uh, in this max. Uh, the system vowed to take the titles off ABC. And then it was the tag team match between ABC and Edwards and Myers. I don't know, like, about the other ma the tag matches on this card. I think that, like, this one was, like, probably the best one. Um, though there weren't that many other ones, but again, just, like, this was definitely, like, the, the better one of, of any of the other ones that were kind of here and there. Like, even though the Rascals in that, Trent Seven and Bailey was pretty good. Um, so I'd say that's probably, like, number two, uh, on this card. But I predicted that the system would win these titles, and huzzah, huzzah, they did, in fact, win these titles, um, which I'm happy about. Like, they they did a lot of, like, beat-up work, lots of, like, tag team 101 stuff here um, in this match, uh, cutting off the ring, uh, wearing them down. Uh, w one of the things where... Um, was it Bay? Uh, you know, it was Austin who was on the apron and he did his handstand thing that he does a whole lot, and Myers speared right through him as he was upside down, was absolutely freaking insane, um, and, and that, that was just, like, holy shit, um, but, yeah, like, it was a, it was a, you know, it was a lot of little things in this match, the little distractions, um, you know, that sort of stuff, slowing down the momentum, um, you know, all, all of that kind of, you know, heel tactics, tripping them up, blah, 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 raking the eyes, etc. Um, eventually, uh, they, you know, after not being able to hit a combination of moves, uh, for several moments after a few reversals and back and forth and whatnot, which was very exciting, um, finally they hit a combination of, of uh, the roster cut and the knee party to become the tag team champions. Um, this moment here where Bay gets a cutter out of nowhere um, onto uh, Myers, pretty darn good, even though you can see him right there in the corner and whatnot. You didn't know whether he was going to be able to hit something, so interesting. Um you know, use of the use of cameras. I think they did use a hard camera for this, but they should have zoomed in on it a bit more um, to make it look like you can't really see Bay. And therefore, when he comes in with the cutter, it's a little bit more, oh, you know. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> it, it was just great anyway. Khan and PCO, I was shocked, honestly shocked by the outcome of this match. I predicted that Khan would win, 
and PCO won. Like, this wasn't much of a wrestling match, but the thing about wrestling matches is you need a variety of wrestling matches. You can't just have this technical, savvy, you know, style of match all the time. You can't just have these high-flying matches. These high-flying matches and, and, and whatnot all the time. You need to have variety. You need to have big men. You need to have another style. I know a lot of people have gotten away from the style of this. They see it as, like, an ancient style that, you know, people don't really do anymore. But when it's done well and it's done right, it's it's pretty darn effective at doing what it's doing. Look at Braun Strowman and and guys like that. Look at Brock Lesnar. You know, any of those sorts of guys, they have, you know, hoss fights effectively. This was a bit of a hoss fight in a street fight or no DQ match, but it was, uh, well, it wasn't on the streets, but it was sort of on the, in the uh, aisles of the, of the, of the arena and whatnot. So, uh, Khan slamming PCO down a couple of times into the uh, set uh, the stage of the set. Uh, PCO getting Khan and slamming him through a table that was next to the set. Like, just devastating stuff. Like, a lot of dev big devastating moves. Um, lots of, you know, work with the chairs and the, the uh, uh, um, um, garbage cans and whatnot and that sort of stuff here. So it wasn't much of a wrestling match traditionally, but it's always good to have something else. Here's a the choke slam that uh, PCO, or the highlight of it at least, that uh, PCO gave to Khan through the table and he still got up and came back for more. Um, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed more in this one that this feud doesn't look like it's continuing. Um, I kind of feel like maybe that the idea here is to build PCO into a title match at some point, but you honestly don't really need to do that much to build him into a title match. So, I don't know. Uh, just pull the trigger on it. Um, but, yeah. Still a really good brawl. AJ Francis had a bit of a mocking of Joe Hendry, and then Joe Hendry said, hey, it came in and sort of said, hey, let's settle this once and for all, you piece of garbage, you know, like, or whatever. Uh, and then, you know, AJ said, well, I'll see you Thursday, or whatever, basically. Um, and so they're going to have a match on Thursday, which, like, before I get into this next bit, it's like, wait, wait, what? These guys are after all of this. They're, they're like, maybe it's going to lead to something else, but, like, the thing here is, like, after all this, you're just going to have a match on TV? Like, what? You should have, be having a match on the next pay-per-view, like, or PLE, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I don't, don't get that. I, I like, sure. If it's leading to a match like that, cool. But it just sort of feels like what, this is the payoff. So obviously it can't be just in, in that regard. All right. MK Ultra versus Luna and Threat. I thought that MK Ultra would retain because I thought they don't want to hot potato the titles, but they hot potato the titles. Um, and this is not good. Like I've been saying for a while, like every woman that's in this like division is good. Like every one that's here is doing good stuff and whatnot. But like you just, I feel bad for them. They have a space to, like, kind of do stuff, but honestly, they need something else to be doing. Just becoming, like, number one contenders or whatever. Like, if Marsha or Kelly had have won this match, and this was, like, a four-person match, and one of them's getting a title shot or whatever, like, that probably would have been better, because then at least you've got 
a direction for them to go and a challenger for Jordan because you need more challengers for Jordan. So I don't know. This like the whole f concept of this just is like the whole division is just like falling apart. And like they teased a breakup of MK Ultra. I really like MK Ultra, but honestly, realistically, like like I've said, like maybe they just need to give up on this tag team division thing because it's just not really working. They just don't have enough teams and they're just wasting time with a lot of these ladies in this division. They're trying their best and doing their best with what they have, but again, it's just one of those things where they just don't have the literal bodies to... And yes, you like you can only feature so many people at a time, but when your roster is paper thin, it, like on this side of the division, it's like, well, maybe we should be looking at just you know, the, you know, the title picture and, like, instead of, you know, saying, well, we've got to give these people something to do, well, we give them something to do by challenging to get the number one contendership. It's that freaking easy each time instead of just doing this stuff. I don't know. Like, this wasn't a bad match, but it wasn't a good match, like I would say, um, because it wasn't much of a match. It was, like, maybe four or five minutes or something, I think. Um, and, yeah, I don't know, like, uh, uh, what's the name? Threat rolling uh, uh, Slamovich up for the win after they'd just taken an absolute beating on the outside uh, uh, before even the match started. Just kind of, like, ruined a whole lot of, like, the match. And kind of the auras of the people like involved, like to an extent, the most devastating. But it's obviously the most devastating move in all of pro wrestling, as we do know. So uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, here's one of the highlights of Marsha uh, dropping Luna with the snowplow on the outside on the floor. This was pretty brutal. Like, like a lot of the stuff at the start when they brutalized them at the start looked good um, and whatnot, and it was building some good drama and whatnot, but that drama was kind of just undone fairly quickly. And, like, I don't know. Where are they going with this? Like, what are they doing and why? Like, I don't know. I don't know. As I said, after the match, uh, Slavovich shoved Kelly, you know, teasing a breakup. Uh, Josh Alexander versus Hammerstone 3. Uh, I feel like now this is going to go even further, but <clears throat> I felt like Josh was going to win because I felt like what they were going to do was build Alexander to being in a match with Moose at Rebellion, which he did last year. So harken back to last year. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, that'll get that out of the way and then Josh can move on to something else. Da-da-da-da-da. But Hammerstone won this one by some nefarious means, by some nefarious means and whatnot, but still he did win this uh, match. I think that this one was a quite good match. Even, like, the stuff that sort of, like, turned... Oh, I don't want to say turned Hammerstone, because he was, like, he was just fairly generic when he first sort of came in anyway. Um, you know, and he didn't really have an established character because he didn't really have much of an interview time or whatever before it. So now you're actually starting to go, okay... Let's give him something to work with. Let's give him something to sink his teeth into. Let's give him a third match with Josh Alexander. Um, you know, or fourth match, realistically. But still, like, let's give him something else. Let's not just have him lose. Because, again, like, you want this guy to be a big part of your, like, roster. Like, so I said that. I said, like, oh, man, it sucks for Hammerstone because he's probably going to be losing. And then why are you signing this guy, you know, and being on the roster and then just being like, man, I've lost to Josh Alexander twice. Where do I go from here? Like, 
you know, like it's really tough. But now you start saying, wow, it might not have been what you thought, but now it's going to evolve into something else and it's going to take another path and going to, you know, get us to another point. So, it, like, my thought is, like, where does this end? to an extent, and then where uh, do we go from there? So it's tough. And, uh, yeah, it, it's that's the thing about wrestling. Like, this is, like, what wrestling is all about. It's made, meant to make you feel. It's meant to make you care uh, and whatnot. And I really, like, <laughs> am invested in, in this now. Like, I wouldn't have been invested, like, if, like, uh, Josh had won because it's just like, oh, yeah, that's what I expected. I wouldn't have been invested in Hammerstone that much because it'd be like, oh, yeah, he's probably losing. But now they're giving him a story and an angle and a feud and something to work with. So it's like, oh, well, now I'm, like, going to invest. Like, I care about Josh Alexander. I want to see him succeed. And, you know, he got screwed effectively. So it's just one of those things. Um, Hammerstone, here's the highlight, Hammerstone taking advantage after the referee got knocked down, so, yeah, and he even, uh, did a low blow onto, uh, Joshi, and, uh, he did tap out to the ankle lock just before, um, uh, ju or just after the referee got bumped down and whatnot, um, so, you have that visual win for the audience to sort of give them something um, more than just like, oh, man, he got he t kicked him in the dick and then he won uh, with his pendulum thing, uh, which is basically like a sidewalk slam elevator um, type move. Um, so, yeah, I can see that, that he's probably like taken that um, as well, like from like Matt Morgan and, and whatnot, or taken inspiration from it. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway, Jim Miller interviews Time Machine ahead of the six man tag. Uh, and it appeared that uh, Shelley was still angry, and, you know, Sabin and uh, Kushida were trying to say, hey, you know, come on. Like, we stuffed up, but. You know, like we've got we've got a match, blah blah blah. Um, so let's let's go and get it. And they're gonna go and get it. Now I said like when I was like thinking about this that I thought the GYV and Ali would win, and indeed they did win. So like again, that's one of those things. Like it, it felt very much like you know, seemingly, at least for another week or so, the GYV are sticking around. So now maybe they'll start, you know, doing something with them. Like where and when and how and why? Like, I don't know, but like still, like if you keep these guys in your division for six months to a year, that's good. Or even longer is even better, but still... If we only have them for a short period of time, we've got to enjoy them while they're here. And, uh, yeah, certainly enjoyed all their work thus far. Um, and look forward to seeing more. But, again, it's just one of those things that, you know, like, it, 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 it feels like you start wondering whether they're going to, like, are they going to stay or are they going to leave or what are they going to do? This kind of thing, all that stuff. I do hope they stay um, because I feel like the tag team division just needs like that. This one extra team. That's probably enough. Probably if they keep, you know, GYV and time machine and, and that in that division too. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah. Again, a lot of, um, I, I wouldn't say this is like a traditional tag team match. Um, this is a six-man tag 
completely different from like you know, the traditional format tag. Um, so like this was this was definitely like up there as well. Uh, although again, it is a tag team match. Or, you know, like it's, it's a tag team match. They're tag team matches. Like whether it's six mans or four mans, whatever. But still, like this was certainly up there. I think it's on the level. Um, with some of the uh, other better matches on the card, like I say, um, Hammerstone and, and Alexander was probably just as good as their first one, uh, maybe a little bit better, um, but <clears throat> I don't think it actually was as good as what I think we all kind of wanted, even this one. Um, but still, like this one, like this one delivered um, quite well. Um, again, a lot of tag team 101 basic stuff, um, you know, cutting the ring off, uh, that sort of thing. But there was a lot of psychology here with Ali not getting in there against Saban and avoiding Saban and, you know, using the GYV to, you know, take out Saban for the most of the match uh, until basically like near the end where Saban finally got his hands on um uh, Ali and uh, yeah, took out a lot of his rage on him, which nearly got him counted out. Um, but he got back in there. Um, but yeah, it was none too availed um, because eventually the GYV, you know, they hit Shelley with the grit your teeth, and then Ali followed up with the 450 splash. Um, it le it leads to more stuff that sort of, you know, continues between these guys. Um, even the good hands got involved again. Um, well, not involved, but they were kind of a distraction. Uh, this highlight here of Saban taking out the good hands um, as well. <clears throat> there was a lot of shenanigans, like, after the match of, of uh, Kushida and uh, Saban you know, sort of tending to Shelley and, so, sorry, hope you're okay, but it sort of fuels that fire between them. Ash by Elegance is here to watch the Knockouts Triple Threat. Uh, knockouts Triple Threat. Jeez, boy, like, like, this is the, like, the best women's match on the card um, by far. Like, again, it's probably, like, it's the only, like, one of the more traditional style of women's matches on the card. They took a lot of inspiration from um, a lot of classic um, TNA, like, um, triple threat matches, including the Unbreakable 3-Way. Um, they took some inspiration, especially with Thick Mama Pump, uh, in talking about the odds at Sacrifice and things like this, which I absolutely loved because... Obviously, she's a genetic freak uh, and whatnot and all of that um, <laughs> and uh, whatnot. And Steels was playing, like, the Christopher Daniels role here. Um, so, you know, she had, like, the Scar um, makeup on and the Scar outfit, which was pretty cool to uh, kind of see. Um The moment where um, Grace had uh, steals in the Muscle Buster and then hit Brookside with, like, a clothesline and then hit the Muscle Buster after that, um, you know, that, that was a pretty pretty good spot. Um, the leg lock submission that Grace, I think, had on steals and then Brookside got the octopus onto, um, onto uh, Grace and then basically Russian leg sweeped her uh, so that she could put her on the mat after she was sort of struggling and getting out of it a bit. Um, yeah, that that was pretty good because it added talk to the leg lock submission that she already had on um, steels. So um, uh, at a certain point in the match, uh, steels got whipped uh, into uh, Ash who was at ringside drinking a bit of the bubbly um, and knocked the champagne absolutely everywhere. Um, 
which caused her to leave um, in disgust and blamed Brookside. So it seems like there's going to be something between those two uh, in the future. Um, so, but it, uh, the match continued, uh, getting back into the ring. Um, uh, you know, Grace hit the uh, Vader bomb on Brookside uh, and, uh, you know, Steele's, uh, you know, broke that up. Uh, one of the moves, like, where uh, Grace caught um, Steele's and then put her on top of Brookside uh, and then clotheslined her while she was on top of Zaya uh, to make her do, like, the code red. Like, that was pretty crazy. Um, and then, like, the end where uh, Grace just, you know, smacked everyone around and, and uh, pinned Brookside with the Grace driver uh, to retain the title. Uh, this spot here where uh, I believe this is, like, the power bomb. Oh, no, this is the spin that they did where they, like, Jordan lifted them both up and spun them both around. Um, it was pretty good, too. Main event time, and just in time, um, <clears throat> uh, Moose took on EY. Um, I don't think that this was as good as what I wanted it to be, but it was a great main event. Like... It had a lot of, like, fireworks and a lot of shenanigans kind of going on to make it feel, like, a lot bigger uh, and a lot more important. Um, you know, uh, EY hitting a whole bunch of moves, particularly to the head, uh, with the punches, with the elbow, with the turnbuckle, with the ring apron, um, you know... Uh, on Moose fairly early on, rocking him, but Moose came back. Um, you know, Moose targeting the ribs throughout the whole match, uh, basically. Uh, Powerbomb uh, on the ramp, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, they counted the Powerbomb to back body drop on the ramp. There was a lot of going on to the outside in this one uh, as well. Um, now, I will say that some people will say, like, some of this was a bit overbooked or whatever and things like that, but it's tough. Like, you've got to tell a story, and it's hard to tell that story without having, like, especially when you've got so many through lines, without having so much sort of going on. Um, so then, uh, we saw, um, you know, a whole bunch of stuff in this match coming towards the tail, uh, tail end of it. Uh, the system coming out, trying to get in, uh, EY's way, but, you know, EY shooshting them off, getting the referee to get them out of here, get them out of here, um, as well, um, even though they kind of interfered, he said, no, don't disqualify him. I want the title, you know, like, just get him out of here, you know. Um, but then from behind, uh, Kazarian, you know, got EY with some cable or whatever and choked him out, laid him on the uh, ramp and set Moose up to uh, hit the spear and win. Um, no, the, like, the story that they kind of told with, like, with this, uh, them going back and forth and, and then, you know, uh, you know, doing, doing these sorts of things was, like, all about, like, uh, EY, again, sort of climbing that mountain, um, and whatnot, and it looked like he could have done, but... And he had several pile drivers throughout this match, uh, but Moose prevailed, and this is one of the pile drivers um, 
right onto the apron, I believe. And here's the highlight of Kazarian um, um, interfering. Also got some digital media exclusives. Um, Crazy Steve, ne Nemeth, the system, the new tag team champions known as um, uh, now known as Spitfire, which interesting name. Uh, one with Hammerstone, one with the GYV and Mustafa Ali, one with Jordan Grace. Uh, the system all together. Here's one of uh, Kazarian getting into Ace Austin and Chris Bay's face, and we know that uh, he faces Ace Austin next week. So the fallout of this is real. So I've already done a preview of some of the stuff that's next week. I didn't. We didn't have Francis. Um, Versus Hendry, but I'm sure it's happening at some point in there. So we'll wait and see that as well. Um, overall, besides the glitches and whatnot, it was a really good show. Like, like, yeah, it, it's just one of those things. They never don't deliver uh, at least a decently good show. Like, the, again, I know this is like a B or C pay-per-view or PLE or whatever you want to call it. But still, like, it delivered very well. And, like, you would have been happy to pay for this and get your money's worth out of it. Like, as, apart from the fact that there was glitches throughout it. Um, but still, they did their best to keep it together and whatnot for the most part. So, and after, like, the first half, it sort of filled out. And, like, even, like, the first, like, some of the first, like, match or whatever was, like, pretty clear of it. So that was all right. But, um, yeah, it is what it is sometimes. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review of Sacrifice. We'll be doing uh, potentially another uh, watch along for Rebellion and uh, whatnot. But I want to know if you guys actually want to see it because, yeah, I don't want to do it and people don't really aren't really that interested or just interested in watching the show by themselves or whatever um, or whatnot. So uh, maybe, yeah, we like I say. Like, it's hard to find other people to do this at the same time as I'm doing it. So it's, you know, and like I say, I can't really pay anyone. And this technically is a job, so, or whatever, um, in a sense. So, like, that's a big issue. Someone's got to dedicate their time to, to doing this, having the same passion that I do, kind of for it at the same time that I do. Um, you know, so that's a lot of ask to sort of have sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'll keep going with it for now with just little old me here, but, uh, hope that's all right with you guys, but still like I do try to make these as good as what I can. Um, but there can only be so much done sometimes because I'm working on 30 other things at the same time, probably, or whatever it is. So it is what it is. But anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed as I say, and hope you join me again in the next one.